I guess I'm going to have to introduce myself as a recovering accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to be in recovery, I think. Um, and it shows up all the time in the work I do. And, you know, when Rehema invited me to speak, I kind of also had the, the view that I was, oh, what am I going to talk about? And, you know, I can talk about just about anything. People tell you that I love talking. So I can, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I can talk about xenophobia and identity, and you know, kind of fourth generation Indian in a South African country. Identity is a big thing. Um, and then I, I, I kind of left it because nothing resonated. And then the one day I was, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what I was doing. And then I thought, what have you been doing your whole life? What is it that you've been doing that you can stand up there and talk about unplugged? And then it just came to me. It was about living into myself. That's all it's been about. That every single thing I've done through my whole life has been about living into myself. And then I kind of go, okay, so you've been doing that. And, you know, there's been the... So the story today is not about the events that happened in my life, because I've got a series of those, and I could spend hours on, uh, on getting divorced, because I found out that my ex-husband was gay. But he's now one of my best friends, and I love him to bits. Um, I could talk about the fact that I was told by a gynecologist that I couldn't have children. Actually, he said to me the following, focus on your career. I was 35 at the time. Focus on your career, because you know what? You ain't going to have children, three laparoscopies, you have endometriosis. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. And then I met this, this beautiful man um, at a friend's house at 2 o'clock in the morning. And um, <laughs> no, I didn't get pregnant on that day. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my mom never sees this. But a, a year and a half later, I was pregnant, and I had my first child at 37. And, um, and he and I are still together 14 years later. Um, and so, so today is not about any of those because I've walked the journey of going, working through those and working through learning gratitude and learning acceptance and learning kindness and understanding the things that I had to walk through. And so I said, well, you know, you're not going to share all of those things. What on earth are you going to talk about? What are people going to listen to? And then I said, well, there is something. There is something where you've done all those things and you get to a point, and this is where I got to kind of over December, January this year, where I went through what I call a little bit of situational depression. Going, so I've done all this stuff. And you know, you also challenge the universe. You go, okay, I've done what you wanted me to do. What else am I supposed to do? You've all had those moments, right? Come on, bring it on. What else am I supposed to do? Because here I was. Life is good, you know, I was kind of dressed for success. I've been running my own consulting business, but you're kind of going through the point again of, you know work is around, but it's not always coming to you. So there's those moments you go, oh, God, it's going to be famine for a couple of months. And I was there, I even took a picture of a bank account because I got, I have to know, I have to know what this is about. <laughs> and, and, you know, the kids were fine and, and they were great. So there's nothing major going on, but, but it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. And so I was going... What am I doing here that, or what am I not seeing? And I think that was a question. What am I not seeing here that I should be doing? What else could I be doing in this space, if anything? And so then I, I, I started thinking about this, and then I got, okay, first, Lily, you've got to stop thinking because you're always in your head. And then I said, I need to experience what this is about. Because I've always been the, what my family calls the rubber ball. So no matter what life hits me with, I bounce back. I can find the silver linings. I can tell you what the gifts are. I can tell you what the blessings are. And I can tell you what's made me stronger. The one thing I've never done, never done, is live into the pain of the moment. To just allow myself to be in that moment of where the pain is. So in that time over December and January, and, you know, I've kind of, as much as I've had stuff, I'll, I'll honestly stand up and say, I've perhaps prided myself a little bit on, you know, I've had all these stuff going on, but I've never had to take antidepressants. And, you know, I just get on with it and that stuff. And then I thought, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to allow myself to be. And I did that. 
for that kind of two and a half, three week period, I allowed myself the discomfort and this time, and I think this is what's important for me in the concept of what I want to talk to you about, of self-love, which is about not allowing an external event to put you into discomfort, but allowing yourself to live into the discomfort of where you are, of truly experiencing what that is for you, because it's different things for different people. And so that's what I did at that point, was to just genuinely allow myself to feel what that was about. And, and there were a couple of things I discovered, that there were things in my life that I was deeply unhappy about. Things that were going on that didn't make sense for me, and I couldn't understand why I was tolerating them. I thought, oh, why I was tolerating them was because I never allowed myself to feel the, the unhappiness. And in feeling the unhappiness, and because I couldn't feel the unhappiness, I couldn't get angry about it. And if you can't get angry about something, you can't do anything about it. Because we all suppress anger sometimes, and because I guess because we've been taught that angry, being angry is a negative thing to do. But anger is, is the emotion of action. If you're not angry about something, you're not going to do anything about it. And so that's where I had to allow myself to be was to choose to be in the discomfort, to experience the emotions that would allow me to change some of the things that I was doing, and consciously choose to be where I was. Um, you know, so when I, I left accounting and went into HR because I was looking on, on kind of trying to do things with people, and, and there were all kind of things that, events that happened, they weren't conscious choices. And so this, this discomfort was about saying, how do I make conscious choices for my life going forward? What's that about? And so self-love is about a conscious choice into something where you don't have to be forced into it. You don't have to wait to have a heart attack or discover you have stage four cancer to find the purpose of your life. We don't need those things. It's about being present in terms of where you are, living into yourself, a conscious choice. So that was the first thing. The second realization I had was, and this is a funny thing because I almost need to demonstrate it. I had to demonstrate it to myself to understand it. But I had been creating my life in resistance to things. So you know that thing of, so when you're in corporate and you go, I don't do politics. Yeah, I don't brown nose. But what I realized was, and this is why it becomes physical, the moment you say, I don't, you're stepping back. Yeah? And so when you're stepping back from yourself, from life, you're not necessarily defining anything about yourself. All you're doing is, and this is a big thing with my kids, I was like, I, I had my son and I was just so consumed with love and I didn't realize I was, I was parenting this child based on a hybrid of what I'd seen, I hadn't defined who I was as a mother. So I'd, I'd like kind of have to go off to work and then my mom would call and she'd go, but Shane, who's gonna take care of the baby? Um, he's okay, his dad's there, nanny's there. But I was feeling this guilt and shame because I was kind of not being the mother that she wanted me to be. So you're constantly defining your life in resistance to I'm not the kind of mother who leaves her kids. So I, I realized that what I was doing was pushing myself backwards as opposed to stepping forward, which is what living into yourself is about. It's about that piece, that piece that goes, I'm living into myself. When you're living into yourself, part of what you have to gift yourself with is inhabiting that space. So when you're doing this, you're literally becoming smaller, yeah? But when you're doing this, there's suddenly a whole space out here that you have to inhabit. So then I had to work out, what do I want? Now, I do a lot of personal transformation work, and we talk about that just now, but the one thing I'd never done for myself, and because I never really thought about it, was a vision board. I, I'd never done it. And I sat down and did one, and I kind of sits in my bedroom. So when I look at what I do now, it's about how do I live into myself and that vision I'm holding for myself. And it's not this, you know, kind of clarity of what it is. Some of it is organic. Sometimes it emerges, and all of that's okay. 
but it's about how do you constantly step forward into a I am versus a I am not. My favorite one at the moment is, you know, we're turning 48 in December last year. I kind of got my two-year plan to 50, is by now you should have. So I have to watch that one in the, in the couple of months to come. And so the third part of this for me was about responsibility. And, you know, one of the speakers spoke about 100% responsibility for your life. And that's absolutely what it is. It's about how do you take responsibility for where you are? So, so the reality that I had to take a picture of my bank account because I didn't like the numbers in it. I had to accept responsibility for that. I had to accept responsibility for my relationship with money and what that was about. Yeah? And, and that, that weight of responsibility, I think often we, we, we prefer to avoid because you have to face the shadows in yourself. You have to face those parts of yourself that you don't necessarily like. And I think that was the other part, to accept that, you know, self-help stuff is really nice, but I also think it has a very Mary Poppins approach to life. Everything is positive, and everything is happy, and it's gratitude. And you know what? I have days when I can be really mean. And as much as I love Sabri, there are days when I, and I watch CSI, I could kill him in 15 different ways and not leave any evidence behind. Yeah, you see, you get this, lady. Yeah? <laughs> And so there's a part of me that goes, I could, I could be as mean as being a serial killer, yeah? And I have to accept that it's not a joke, though, because we all have that level of meanness that exists. The responsibility part is not just accepting responsibility for, you know, being the good stuff. You've got to step and balance it and say, I'm all of it. I have the potential for all of it. So the fact that I've gotten myself into the situation is because there's stuff here that I'm not really good at, and I need to do some work on it. All right? And then the fourth part is, is what I call the deeply spiritual part, which I think is important because it goes to the core. And, and there's been some themes around forgiveness that has, that's come through today. But I link it to redemption. And so that's a big word because it kind of almost takes on a religious, biblical context. But redemption in the in the self-love context, is about being able to hold yourself for those moments when you do do things that are not necessarily kind and that are not necessarily all loving and unconditional. It's about allowing ourselves and giving ourselves permission to be human. Because the reason we here, the reason we chose to have this human experience is to experience all of it. We didn't come here just to be perfect and positive because I think we'd all be bored to death if we really, really were honest. The reality is we're here to experience all of it. But in order to experience it, we have to give ourselves permission for it. But we also, in giving ourselves permission, not just have to forgive other people, we have to forgive ourselves for the roles we've played in situations where we just haven't been great. Because those are there all the time. Yeah, um, I had a situation, I, when I left my corporate role, it wasn't all pleasant, and there was a relationship there that was deeply important to me that had got kind of unraveled in a way, and it took me about three years after I left, where I called her up, she was my ex-boss actually, and I said, you know, it'd be nice for us to chat, and we chatted, and, and at the time, there were lots of things I blamed her for, for what she wasn't and who she wasn't. But what I'd realized in the three years was that there were parts that I needed to take responsibility for, that I needed for, for things that I had done, for behaviors that I had done, for disloyalty, as an example, for telling people that I thought she was a poor leader but never actually saying that to her. Yeah? And so my redemption in that space was to call her up and tell her I was sorry. It, it wasn't going to shift anything. It wasn't going to change anything. But... It allowed me to accept responsibility. It allowed me to redeem myself for behaving in such a small way. Redemption is about forgiving yourself for the moments when you are small. Because we all have those moments. It's not impossible for us. And I think the last thing for me was the, the issue around autonomy. 
Now, autonomy is a big word because for me, it's a big word. It's one of the reasons I left corporate because I wanted the space to create something that was mine, something that I could say I was doing. And I still, it's, it's a big thing, but it's, it's kind of emerged for me now to take on a different meaning. Autonomy is around the realization that you could listen to 20,000 people, and I have done that, because you come into my library and there's like shelves of self-help books, and I could quote just about anybody. And in realizing and, in, and kind of getting to this point where I had done the work, I had done the work with the books, I had done the work in the workshops, I had done the coaching, I had done just about everything, and I still found myself in a space wondering where to from here, what now? And it was the, the idea that in all of this, nobody had a solution for my life. Nobody had a solution for what my unique way of being and proposition to the world was ever going to be. That autonomy to create my life the way it was meant to be is mine and mine alone. I mean, there's a silence in the room around that because it's a scary thought, right? It's deep and it's scary because I, I was like, oh my God. So if I'm going to create it, if I mess it up, it's all on me, yeah? And so the autonomy around creation, so often you're sitting in a job and you go, oh, you know, I wish I had this. Well, when you finally give it to yourself, it's a scary place. It's a scary place. You know, Spider-Man goes, somebody, or oh, his uncle said to him, with great, with great power comes great responsibility. Autonomy is one of our God-given powers to create our lives as they're meant to be for us. And so all of those things for me around <coughs> conscious discomfort, around creating your life as I am, around responsibility, redemption, and autonomy are the things that step you into self-love, that beyond the positive thinking and beyond the gratitude is a point where you have to and must accept that you're worthy of love and give it to yourself. And in giving yourself permission to love yourself, you allow yourself to manifest that in the world. And so I'm going to end with something that I wrote to my son, my old son, when I was still pregnant with him. And I offer you to you today that sometimes when you forget, forget it, that perhaps this will help you remember your way back to self-love. And this is what I wrote. I said, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you'll be. But I do know that you'll be enough. Thank you.